Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today I'm taking a look at the Denver Broncos to determine whether or not I think they can make the playoffs in 2021. But before getting to that topic, just a quick question for those of you viewing. What do you think the Broncos record will be? And of course, keep in consideration that there's 17 games. So do you think they'll go above 500, below 500? Do you think they'll make the playoffs? Whatever it is, comment down below and you guys will kind of hear my thoughts throughout. But looking at the Broncos, I love their roster top to bottom. But if I'm being honest, I'm addressing the elephant in the room. I don't think they will win the division. I just think the Chiefs are a possible dynasty in the making there's too much of a powerhouse of course if Mahomes or someone gets hurt things could change but if I'm being realistic this Denver team can make a pretty good running at the wild card spot and I'm not saying it's impossible to win the division but at least to me I'm gonna go ahead and give the Chiefs the crown for the division winner and look at the Broncos as a potential wild card team but again just because you're a wild card team doesn't mean you're not a threat I'm just saying the Chiefs they're arguably the best team in the NFL I don't expect the Broncos to come out on top of them but looking at this Broncos team they have arguably to me the best secondary in the NFL and that enough can take you pretty far in the NFL I do think there's some secondaries out there you know they might have some more star power at the very top end of their number one or number two corners you know Rams or Jalen Ramsey Darius Williams Ravens Marlon Humphrey Marcus Peters you know, there's other corners out there, Stephon Gilmore, JC Jackson. But when you consider the entire secondary, cornerback and safety, all their starters, to me, there's no one that touches the Denver Broncos. They got arguably the best cornerback in the NFL draft in Patrick Sertain. They have two star studded safeties in Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons. They signed Kyle Fuller to reunite with the special defense and to reunite with Vic Fangio. They got Ronald Darby, a guy that's had his better days, but he's still got experience. He's still somewhat of a veteran that can play at a high level. He did great last year, and that's why he got good money this year. Bryce Callahan, a guy that kind of flies under the radar, yet can hold his own just as good as any other cornerback. That's six guys in that secondary that really could be on a starter on any single team, except for the Broncos. You know, you're probably not going to have six guys starting at once, but what's so good about that is because you can alternate them. You can bring them in and out. And therefore, you guys are always going to be energized because you don't need, you know, if you take away Jalen Ramsey from the Rams for a single play, they're going to be hurting in the secondary. However, the Broncos, you take, you know, theoretically, Patrick Sertain out and you put in Bryce Callahan or vice versa. You put in Kyle Fuller, take out Ronald Darby. You're not going to be hurting because they're all similar talent. They could all be top tier corners and safeties and players in the secondary in the NFL. And that is going to give the Broncos a lot of success, in my opinion, up front. You got two of the top pass rushers in the NFL, Bradley Chubb and Von Miller. I'm not saying they're number one and two, but they're still top tier, top pass rushers in the NFL by far. Bradley Chubb, his rookie year is phenomenal. He hasn't really repeated that since, but I think with a healthy Von Miller, we're going to see both of them get a lot of sacks this year. I wouldn't be surprised if both of those guys got 10 plus sacks, especially with them having such a good defense to back them up and having a 17th game this season to give them an extra game to get an extra sack. Who knows? Looking at the offense, that's another elephant in the room. You have to address the quarterback position, you know. How far can you get with the Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater? And I'll kind of get into who I think will play. But looking at the backfield, I think between Melvin Gordon and or Javante Williams, one of those guys is going to emerge as a pretty good starter. I wouldn't be surprised if Melvin Gordon kind of starts the season. But throughout, we see Javante Williams kind of really taking a role in this offense and becoming, you know, the clear-cut guy to lead this backfield for the future kind of like cam Akers did with the rams jonathan taylor with the colt it took a game or two took it even part of the season but at some point in the time the tide changed and we realized who held the reins in this backfield and i think javante williams is going to pan out just fine offensive line it hurt to lose juan james but it's still a decent and stout o-line you got an all pro or pro bowl left tackle at one point and garrett bulls so it's like it's not like it's an empty O line. The Juwan James things hurt, but you saved money, and I think you could replace him at least in the near future. Maybe not this exact off season, but in the following seasons, he is replaceable. Looking at the receiving core, question marks there. Cortland Sutton's coming off an injury. Jerry Judy's got butter fingers, but you know these guys are young. I mean, Cortland Sutton's still still on a rookie contract. Jerry Judy's was only a rookie. Noah Fant a very reliable tight end. Jerry Judy, he's got all the tangibles of being a great receiver. He's got. He's got the speed, he's got the route running, he's got the wisdom. It's really just, you know, a confidence thing, in my opinion, of catching the football, and that can be worked on, and I think it will be fixed. Cortland Sutton's coming off an injury, but I think he'll be fine, and we saw in his second year how good he's going to be, and we had big expectations last year. Didn't live up to him because he got hurt, but I think this next following year, this receiving core is going to be very good. And just looking at that as a whole, where is their weak spot outside of the quarterback position? And I know quarterback position is like, well, it's the most important position, so clearly, 
You can't just ignore it. But there's been teams before that have made the playoffs because of how good their defense is, yet their quarterback wasn't the best. You got Saxonville in 2017 when that defense carried, and you got Blake Bortles at quarterback. The Bears have done phenomenal when they've had Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. Have these teams won Super Bowl? No, but have these teams gotten success? Have, have these teams made the playoffs? Yes. This isn't a Broncos Super Bowl video. This is a Broncos playoff video. And I just think looking at how well, well-rounded well this team is, that's organized by a great coach that has experience, Vic Fangio. To me, how do you not make the playoffs? I'm not saying it's a locked in, but to me, I'd be very surprised if they don't. Looking at the quarterback position, finally addressing it. One of two things happen. Either Drew Locke finally takes a step forward like he did in his rookie year. I mean, the Cat went 4-1 and his rookie year. It's not like he had the prettiest numbers ever. It's still only seven touchdowns to three picks, but it's still, it showed he has potential to win football games. And even this last year, he didn't do the best, but they still won games. They weren't the worst team in the NFL. He still showed bursts of talent. And last year was hard for the team. They dealt with injuries. Like I said, Cortland Sutton was hurt. Jerry Judy had some drop issues. There was COVID, you didn't have training camp, you didn't have rookie camp, you didn't have mini camp, you didn't have practice, you didn't have preseason. Von Miller was hurt, their secondary was decent, but it wasn't as good as it is now. Just to me, how does this team not get a little better? And even if Drew Locke doesn't take that step forward, Teddy Bridgewater, he's as unrisky as it comes. He's not going to be the bit go big or go home guy. He's not going to probably win you a fourth quarter game winning drive, but he won't lose the game for you. He's consistent, he's conservative, he's safe, and he just doesn't turn the ball over all that much. Of course, guys have their picks, and I'm just saying, Teddy Bridgewater, he's not going to be like Drew Locke last year where he had 16 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Teddy Bridgewater, at minimum, would have a two-touchdown, two-interception ratio, and therefore, that might be enough for the Broncos. So one of two things, you have this young kid step up and be the next best thing for your franchise, or you play it safe and conservative with Teddy Bridgewater where he just kind of manages the game. And you know, this term game manager has been kind of put as condescending where you I mean it means your quarterback sucks but really some of these rosters in the NFL are so good all you need is a game manager and the rest will get it done I think Washington if Ryan Fitzpatrick could be a game manager their defense will do similar to the Broncos and take them to the playoffs Daniel Jones if he could be a game manager and just not lose the game just not turn it over that Giants roster could really do the rest you know the Colts with Carson Wentz are going to need a little bit out of him but if he could just not turn the ball over the rest of the roster is very good and the Broncos, they're in a similar situation. They just need a game manager, and the rest will do itself. You got the pass rushers. You got the star power. You got the secondary. You got the coach. You got the receivers. You got the O-line. You got the backfield. You just need a guy that can lead this team, give this team confidence, and not put this team in a bad position in every week in and out. I like the Broncos roster. I'm not a Broncos fan, but I do believe in them. They're in a tough division. You know, I went over the Chiefs, but the Chargers and the Raiders are definitely nothing to laugh at. We saw Justin Herbert. Phenomenal rookie quarterback. I think he's going to have a mere amazing year too. And I think the Chargers will make the playoffs. So you could see three teams come out of the AFC West, but it is not impossible. Just to me, this Broncos team is well-rounded. And obviously, I don't see this happening. But if we get into talks of an Aaron Rodgers trade or a Deshaun Watson trade, this team goes from are they a playoff team to how many Super Bowls are they going to win? That's how good of a roster they have. They just need a pro bowler quarterback to really take him to that next level and drew lock he doesn't have to be this next best thing as long as he's not worse in the league as long as he's not bottom five in the league he just needs to be average to above average and the rest will get it done and therefore i definitely think it's possible because like i said they're not asking him to be a top five top 10 quarterback they're just asking him to not be dead last in the league that some people do have him at i don't think he's dead last but he's definitely not high up for me but i do believe in him to turn things around just because I just think everything is better for him than it was last year. He's going to have more practice, more reps, more camps, more players to rely on, a better defense to rely on. I think things will get better. I'm not betting on them to make the playoffs, but to me, if this entire team's healthy and we see Drew Locke improve, there's no way they don't. And even if this team is healthy and Teddy Bridgewater just plays a safe, to me, this roster has playoffs written all over it. But you guys got to tell me, do you agree? Do you disagree? I like the Broncos to possibly make it this year. That defense and secondary is just way too stacked. But I understand how much is being reliant on the quarterback position. We'll just to see, like I said, comment down below. Do you agree or disagree? And as always, of course, I guess referring back to the question today, where do I see the record being? To me, eight and nine would be the floor and 11 and six feels like the ceiling. But to me, 10 and seven, 11 and six can really give you a playoff spot, especially there being seven playoffs first in the AFC. I think it'll happen. I think they have a good chance of making it. And of course, I wouldn't bank on this, but like I said, if a Mahomes or someone gets hurt, the division is wide open again. I'm not banking on that, but I'm just saying things can open up. We never know what's going to happen. We can't predict the future, but as always, guys, thanks for watching. Tune in the morning.